is this is wrong. There we go. Well, that's better. Now, there's a cable in the picture. <laughs> you might be wondering who the f I am and why I'm so unprofessional. Um, now, I'm the guy that writes the blog posts about electronics projects on our blog. I do it once a month about like Arduino, Nixie Clock, that sort of stuff. Cool projects that um, that you might want to read up on, so you should go over there after the video and have a look. There are only two project posts on there at the moment, but that will increase over the following months. Now, this video is actually about this month's project, which is to build a field mill, a very special kind of electric field sensor. And uh, you might be wondering, like, why the hell do you even want to measure an electric field, right? Now, first of all, electric fields are, of course, generated by charges. Charges are everywhere. They're on the ceiling, on the board, on the floor, on my clothes, any, any of that kind of thing. And, of course, in clouds. And you would really want to know about them if they, cause a, if they pose a risk, right? So, for example, if you're NASA and you have huge rockets that are filled to the brim with explosives that you want to go into space and not blow up, and you're situated in Florida, where, let's face it, thunderstorms are more likely than me messing up my lines and stuttering in this video. You would want to know about the thunderstorms and where they are and if it's safe to launch. So what they actually do is they have a huge ray of field mills spread all over the Kennedy Space Center, which allows them to track these storm cells. Now, there are some other things you can do with these things. You can do contactless voltage measurement. So if you had a voltage on this board, and I wanted to measure it, but I couldn't touch it because the voltage was super, super high or the leakage had to be very, very low. I could take my field mill, hold it here, and the charges, you know, the voltage uh, that this thing has generates a field in between it, which we can measure, and then you can see the voltage. But that's even more niche than a normal field mill. Field mills are already pretty niche because not that many people need to know the atmospheric E-field or really any E-field. And... Uh, contactless voltage measurement is even less likely. Now, first of all, before I can show you what it does, is uh, I want to show you just quickly how it works. Now, for that, we should probably first look at the most simple electric field sensor that there is, which is two plates uh, and a current sensor. <laughs> there, these plates are connected through the current sensor, and what happens is that as the electric field is applied, electrons move from one plate through the current meter to the other plate, until the electric field in the middle completely cancels out the external field. So the orange arrows are the field generated by the charges that move from here to the other side. Now this effect is called influence. Um, and basically what it means that is that the charges, if they can move, so if this is a closed circuit, they will always move so much that the field is zero in the middle. Now movement of charges is obviously current, which we can sense with our current meter, how convenient. Um, and that gives us an estimation to the changing electric field because as soon as the field is applied and the charges are equalized there's not going to be any more current flowing. So if we just look at the output curve with a non-changing field the output current is zero. Just imagine it's zero. I know it's not but I couldn't really draw it directly on the axis. So again field doesn't change, output current is zero, field changes, output current is something other than zero and then it drops to zero again as the field stops changing. Now this is obviously a problem if you want to measure the field from clouds, because clouds generate the field very slowly, um, and they move also rather slowly. So the overall change in the field isn't really that great and would always be around zero. And also you don't actually have the reference from where you start. So if you know that the field strength has changed 10 kilovolts per meter, you know that you have 10 kilovolts per meter more than you had during the beginning of the measurement. But that doesn't tell you anything. If you had minus 10 kilovolts in the beginning of the measurement, you're now at neutral. And, you know, I don't know, you can launch your rocket. But if you started at 20 kV per meter, you're now at 30 kV per meter, and it'd be like super dangerous territory if you launch the rocket, it will explode. So you need some way of actually sensing a field that is static. Now, how can we do that? It's actually quite simple. We just simply take a shielding rotor and turn the static field into a changing one by simply shielding it and then unshielding it again. So the way that it works is that you have a pattern of four electrodes. These two are connected and these two are connected. And then you have the rotor, which I hope you can see. It might be a bit reflective. Maybe if I hold it like this. Um, there's a rotor turning in front of them, which is, uh, which is grounded. And uh, if it's uh, across these electrodes, these two are shielded. And like this, these two are shielded. And because it's turning, it's basically shielding and unshielding them resulting in changing field, which we can measure with this. Now, if you're interested in the actual maths of the thing, you should go ahead and check out my channel. I have a video on calculating the sort of 
theoretical output current from this thing and there's uh, some more of the theory and the deeper theory but be warned there is there is some math content in it it's enough i mean i could do it i'm not that good at it but yeah if you're not interested in math maybe skip that so now that we're all experts in uh, field measurement and field mills i can go ahead and give you a quick demonstration about this one this this is the one that i've built nice and shiny um so let's go over into the other lab for that all right, uh, a quick demo setup together. Uh, what I just forgot to say in <laughs> while I was in the other basement is that uh, every single file needed to make this is open source. I put it all up on our GitHub, so if you want to make one of these things, um, the files are all available and uh, there's even a little bit of a, a guide how to put it together. So now that that's out of the way, we're gonna just do a quick bit of a demonstration. Now, what I have here, this wooden box, um, are just two wooden plates screwed at a fixed distance between them and what this setup does is that it generates a fixed known and constant electric field right the distance is known the voltage is known so you know the field because volts per meter distance and voltage are both known you obviously know the field so if we just put the field mill inside it making sure that the thing is disconnected there we go you can see that the reading is still zero uh, yeah I've, maybe i should explain that actually this thing down here is the motor speed, which needs to be held fairly accurately. This thing jumping around a bit is probably just from me moving it. Speed is twice as high, the reading here will be twice as high as well. And keep that in mind, because I might have made a slight mistake with the calibration, because I calibrated it for a slower field mill, the one that I built before. So the reading that will be shown here is going to be twice what we actually apply. But <clears throat> we're going to get to that later. So this is the field reading. I have calibrated this at the moment to show the voltage applied to this. And not the field, but you'd have to take the voltage that you see that you see here and divide that by 0 0.1 meters to get the actual field strength. So it's only multiplying it by 10. In the default calibration that's in the GitHub, that is already done. So if you get a reading out of there, it's actually in, in volts per meter. But here it isn't just because it's easier to see if this thing says 400 and that says 400, that it's correct. Just that this thing would say 800 because again, the reading is twice as high with this calibration. So. If we just plug that thing in, turn it on, <clears throat> and we turn up the voltage. I'm going to hide this. You can see the reading increasing, or well, decreasing technically. And we are at about 600, 700, it's about 700 as a reading. Now again, I said it's twice as high, so the voltage should be about 350 volts. Oh, and it's 380. Okay, so... Maybe it's drifted a bit, and yeah, the reading is increasing as well now. It's a bad ride, right? It's not a super precision instrument, but uh, it's still pretty cool, and especially for the fields that are in clouds, they don't have to be measured 100% accurately anyway. So this is fine. So if we just change the voltage a little more, turn it up. 707 volts should give us 1,400 something. Probably will give us like 1,300. Yeah. Yeah, around right about 1,330 is what we're getting right now. So, <clears throat> just turn it down again so I don't shock myself. Uh, I'm gonna set up some other demos, some other things I can show you, and uh, I'll be back in a second. Another fun demo that you can do is you can take a pipe and uh, find out the place where you have deposited charges. So I've rubbed it on one side on my sweater, and uh, if we take it and slowly rotate it around, we should find a point where the, the electric field that comes off of it is positive. There you go, dropping off again, so about here is where I rubbed it across my sweater and on the other side, or just any other side, it's just the normal negative charge that it has. Now this is of course completely pointless, it's just a cool demo. Now another cool thing that I can demonstrate with this is the effect of the triboelectric series. So if we take two materials that are near the top like glass and near the bottom like PVC, and we rub them together, you can see that the charges they accumulate are correspondingly inverted. Now the overall magnitude of the charges is going to be different because of course the distance is different and the area is a different size, but the polarity is certainly noticeably <laughs> opposite. 
So yeah, there you go. I hope you found that interesting. If you did, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and that you check out the article I wrote about it because there is some more information in it. Also check out the blog for future projects. Again, one a month. And uh, I hope to see you again next time. Yeah.